Welcome to another edition of Horse Center, everyone. I am Brian Zipsy, and as always, I have the great pleasure of being joined by my co-host to the East Coast. That's Matt Shipman. How are you today, Matt? I am good, Brian. I'm ready for a little trip to New Orleans. I don't know. To me, it feels like when we, when the Lecompte goes off, that that the Derby Trail is getting serious. I'm with you, Matt. Uh, last year, we saw some good horses in the Lecompte, and I think we're going to talk about those same horses again today. But first, we will start with the race you mentioned, the Grade 3 Lecompte, a mile 16th, $200,000. And Matt, I think we have some serious horses, uh, some serious Kentucky Derby potential horses in the field. A couple of horses that we identified on our Kentucky Derby ranking show last week. We'll start with Mark Cassie, the well-known uh, Papa Cap, Papa Cap is pretty well known, of course, because he was second in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile last year. He was second twice in a row, in fact, in grade one races to Corniche. He could never catch Corniche out there on those California tracks. But I thought Papa Cap ran some very good races last year as a juvenile. Yeah, no doubt. And I think he's the established horse, the established horse with some class uh, in his past performances uh, with the number of starts the grade one races, the seconds in the Breeders' Cup and the American Pharaoh behind one of the lead, well, behind one of the finalists, Corniche, for the Eclipse Award for two-year-olds. He, of course, won his first two starts, uh, a maiden special weight, and then he won a grade two, the best pal. He is the only graded stakes winner in the race. Yeah, how about this first crop from Gunrun, Gunrunner, uh, the excellent horse of the year turned stallion. Gunrunner has uh, been a revelation as a sire, and Papa Cap is one of the reasons why, Matt. Uh, yeah, I like the fact that uh, he was able to travel last year, too, for trainer Mark Cassie. Mark Cassie often has horses down in New Orleans this time of year, so Papa Cap is down there with him. Uh, Cassie, a Hall of Famer. I got a root for Jersey Joe Bravo, too, a jockey that we've been watching, Matt, for uh, uh, the better part of four decades now, Jersey Joe. So he's on Papa Cap again, which he was out in California. And uh, I always wondered if Papa Cap never had the best of trips in some of his losses after winning, as you said, a, a maiden in Florida and then a, a graded stakes out at Del Mar. Uh, he's lost his last three, but good performances. Breeders' Cup Juvenile, I like the way he finished that race off. I think there's a lot of speed in this LeCompte. It's, it's not a huge field, but I think there is plenty of early speed, and I think that could bode well for Papa Cap and Jersey Joe Bravo sitting uh, a good trip in a stalking trip. Uh, the horse that I think could even end up the favorite over Papa Cap, it'll be interesting to see how this is bet, is the number five horse, Matt, at the center. Uh, another young stallion, not this time, who had high hopes for Epicenter looked really good last time winning the gun runner. Yeah, and, and throwing the whole gun runner thing in there. Yes, it's a Steve Asmussen horse, Epicenter. He's not by gun runner. He's by not this time, but he won the gun runner stake. So, you know, the whole Asmussen thing. So it certainly is a interesting mix in here. The other, the other stakes winner in the field, I thought that was a really, as you mentioned, Brian, a really impressive effort in that gun runner to win by six. Uh, I, I like his pedigree a lot. To me, he uh, looks like a horse the way he ran and with his pedigree that's going to appreciate more and more distance. The gun runner, I think, was run at the same distance as today as the Lecompte is going to be. And I agree with you, Brian, that... Um, Epicenter might actually end up the favorite. Yeah, if I had to say who was the horse to beat, it probably is Epicenter. That's going to sound strange considering the big races that Papa Cap ran in last year and did well, but Epicenter has that huge race over the track. And Matt's right, the, uh, the gun runner was an excellent performance. I thought his second start of his career, after fading a little bit in the first start, the second start of his career, made him win at Churchill Downs last fall was also really good. So Epicenter seems to have a lot of potential, but maybe most importantly, he has a really good recent win over that fairgrounds main track. Papa Cap, of course, has run at several tracks, but never uh, in New Orleans at fairgrounds. Looks like those are the two heavy favorites, Matt. It'll be an interesting matchup. I think Epicenter has just a little bit more speed than Papa Cap. Like I mentioned, there is speed in this race. So it'll be interesting to see how Joel Rosario 
uh, riding epicenter and jo uh, Joe Bravo on Papa Cap uh, decide things early so the race uh, can be decided late in this Lacan. If we're looking to beat one of the two clear favorites, Matt, I think we start with Cyber Knife, sired by who, Matt? Another gun runner. Yeah, gun runner is uh, prolific already. First crop. Cyber Knife is very interesting to me. This is a Brad Cox trained horse. He'll be ridden by Florent Giroux in here. He's he's had three starts and and they're all actually in maiden races, but he's run really well in each of the three. He actually won, but was disqualified first time out. He ran a very good second next time out uh, in Kentucky. Uh, but he too has a win at uh, 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 over the distance, over the track, mile 16th at uh, Fairgrounds last time. Uh, he's got plenty of speed and um, I think he's run against some pretty good horses, even though they were only maiden races. I think he fits as he steps up into a grade three LeCompte. Yes, absolutely. Uh, this is one that I would classify as an up and comer um, because he only has the maiden win, but all of those races that, as you mentioned, Brian, were good races. Cyber Knife, uh, another one, that I see with really good, with a really good pedigree as one that is going to do better and better as the distance increases by gun runner out of a flower alley mare, um, Brad Cox. So uh, interesting one. Um, I don't know if uh, uh, he can upset both Papa Cap and Epicenter at this point, but certainly, a contender to get into the uh, trifecta, maybe exact the uh, uh, superfecta for sure. Yeah, and I'll look at it a slightly different way. Papa Cap and Epicenter are already more established on this Kentucky Derby Trail. They're the two clear favorites, but I think if anybody else steps up and, and becomes a really nice horse, I think Cyber Knife is the most likely candidate of the rest of the field. And I, I think that potential is still pretty high for Cyber Knife like Epicenter, a win over the track. He got a little bit uh, tired late in that mile 16th, but after a couple sprints, he needed the the uh, the tightener, and I think he'll be better on Saturday in the Clot LeCompte. So an interesting horse. Another interesting horse, I think, is Trafalgar. I, I don't have quite the same feeling of really high potential like I do for Cyber Knife with Trafalgar, but Trafalgar has the advantage of being one of the only ralliers in the race. In fact, when he broke his maiden two starts back for trainer Al Stahl Jr., uh, he came from way, way back. And then like Cyber Knife and like Epicenter, he's got a win over the track last time as well. Yeah, a uh, great name, Brian Trafalgar. Trafalgar um, and the sire is Lord Nelson. So there's some kind of history thing uh, uh, with, uh, with all of that. Uh, and certainly Al Stahl at Fairgrounds, uh, are formidable. I don't know if I, I certainly can't say the kind of things that I said about uh, uh, Epicenter and Cyberknife about uh, the distance and this guy getting better with as the distances increase. We'll have to wait and see. But um, that was a nice allowance win at Fairgrounds. Yeah, a nice maiden win, a nice allowance win. The, the allowance win came at Fairgrounds. And I've been talking about a fair amount of speed in this race. So Trafalgar could be the one that is picking up the pieces late as the likely fourth choice in the LeCompte. One other horse I, I want to mention, Matt, is Surfer Dude, because Surfer Dude has all kinds of breeding uh, to run 10 furlongs even, but he has shown a lot of speed. He's run against a lot of good horses. He's shown a lot of speed. He's, he's already lost twice to up the center. I don't know what that means for Saturday. Uh, I don't know if they'll be able to rein in some of that speed or, or they send them from the rail is probably the most likely thing. And with uh, Epicenter and Cyberknife wanting to be out there real close too, uh, that's one of the reasons I see a, a, a fast pace in here. Surfer Dude is a horse I, I want to keep an eye on with that breeding. He's shown some real speed early, hasn't won a lot, but uh, an interesting horse. He's a Curlin, he's trained by Dallas Stewart, um, uh, you know, who knows how to uh, win big races. He knows how to get horses ready uh, for the Derby trail and get them to the Kentucky Derby. We shall see. That was a, you know, a decent enough third in the gun runner behind Epicenter. Yeah, yeah. He, he faded pretty bad there to, uh, when he was third, but uh, a lot of speed and the potential to be a good distance horse. And he's a very... Uh, 
uh, unusual runner for Dallas Stewart. Dallas Stewart really known for horses who like to come from off the pace. To, so to, to see this horse with all this distance breeding, showing all this speed early, it, it makes me wonder what uh, what Surfer Dude is destined to become. All right, Matt, uh, those are the principles in the LeCompte uh, on Saturday. As you said, it kind of really kicks off the Kentucky Derby Trail here in 2022. I want to know who's your top pick in this LeCompte. Brian, I'm going to go with uh, Epicenter. I really liked what I saw uh, in with that fairgrounds uh, victory. He's got uh, uh, he's got recency in there. Uh, so uh, I'm going to go with Epicenter. Yeah, and this is a little bit of a, a, a surprise to me because Matt had Papa Cap uh, pretty high yeah. in his Derby rankings, and Epicenter didn't make his top twelve last week. He was on my list, and I respect him, and I think he's the horse to beat. I think he probably will get favored. I'm going to pick Papa Cap to pick up the pieces in here. I just like the fact that he has such a strong foundation from last year. Mark Cassie usually has his horses ready to run. I think Papa Cap can get the job done. I, I'm also looking for strong improvement from Cyberknife, who uh, just broke his maiden last time. All right, Matt, last year's LeCompte, if you remember a year ago, it was all about Midnight Bourbon. And uh, one of the interesting things about that uh, LeCompte of last year, besides some really good horses in the race, was the fact that it was the first ever meeting between Midnight Bourbon and Mandaloon. And uh, well, here we are a year later and they're about to go again, Matt. It's the Louisiana, it's grade three, a mile 16th, just like the LeCompte. It's actually the race before the LeCompte on a stacked card at the fairgrounds. First off, let's let's talk about Mandaluna a little bit because he had a strange 2022, but save one race, this lightly raced son of Into Mischief just ran big all year long. And uh, he hasn't run since July when he turned in a huge performance in the Haskell. Yeah, uh, what, he's got a great record, as you mentioned, Brian, with eight starts five wins one way or another, five wins, um, a second and a third. Let's also note that um, both Mandaloon and Midnight Bourbon are using this uh, Louisiana Stakes as a prep race for the Saudi Cup coming up uh, <clears throat> in February. Yeah, uh, Mandaloon has, uh, has been terrific um, and has the uh, three to two edge over who was ahead in the previous five meetings between Mandaloon and Midnight Bourbon. Um, as you mentioned, Mandaloon uh, has not been seen since he uh, finished second in the Haskell, but was moved up by disqualification when Hot Rod Charlie came down. Yeah, and of course, Midnight Bourbon was the reason for that disqualification as he got checked hard uh, between the two with uh, Hot Rod Charlie being the main uh, issue there. So Hot Rod Charlie was taken down from the Haskell. Mandaloon was put up. Uh, I thought it was a terrific race by Mandaloon. Now I watched that race several times. Mandaloon was on the rail the whole way. He definitely moved uh, uh, outside of a tiring following C, another good horse, and, and, and then went back to the rail and just kept coming. Um, in fact, it looked like Hot Rod Charlie uh, was going to uh, be a clear winner at one point, I thought, uh, early in the stretch, and, and Mandaloon came back at him tooth and nail on the rail. I actually thought it might have been Mandaloon's best race ever. Um, Cox decided he needed some time to mature. He needed some time to rest after that hard race in the Haskell. Here we are uh, uh, about six months later. Uh, he's working really well. You said five wins out of eight starts. Uh, he's finished first in four. Uh, he might still get a sixth win with the Kentucky Derby, another race in which, of course, he ran a huge uh, performance when he was second to Medina Spirit. That decision in the Kentucky Derby somehow is still pending. Uh, pains me to say that we still don't know who the winner of the 2021 Kentucky Derby is, Matt, but it still might be Mandaloon. I'm excited for what this horse might become. Like I said, still lightly raced, working great but it's a tough spot for his first race in six months. And, and of course, you spoke about the rivalry. He's going to see Midnight Bourbon again. Mandaloon has actually raced against Mid. This will be the sixth time in seven races. So we have a full-blown rivalry between the two, Matt, something we don't see in horse racing a lot anymore. Yeah, absolutely true. And especially with the, uh, the three-year-olds, um, Midnight 
bourbon last year continued on after the Haskell uh, to to, to string together some very nice second place performances in, in really good races. He was second in the Clark. He was second in the Pennsylvania Derby. He was second in the Travers. Uh, um, and, and that certainly is a Steve Asmussen kind of horse when they are in good form, he likes to run them and they, and they seem to, to hold up well to the, that kind of racing because Asmussen doesn't tend to push them hard um, in the morning. So here they are back, uh, four-year-olds now. It'll be interesting to see what we got. Yeah, Midnight Bourbon uh, proved himself as a really good horse. And it, it's, uh, it's almost odd for me to say because he hasn't won since last year's Lecompte a year ago. He's lost eight straight races. But as you alluded to, Matt, uh, there are just good performance after good performance within those eight races, even the Kentucky Derby where he got off mm -hmm. to a tor uh, terrible start. Uh, I thought he ran a good race. So um, nothing but good races from Midnight Bourbon. He was third in the Clark last time, which may have been a little disappointing, but, you know, Maxfield was, was the winner and Midnight Bourbon certainly didn't run a bad race in that Clark either, uh, just fading the last 16th of a mile. Um, a very good horse to have lost eight in a row. And he is the speed of this race. Uh, somebody else will have to take the race to him. Mandaloon has good tactical speed, but Midnight Bourbon has more speed. Very interesting to me after 13 starts that Midnight Bourbon will, will both be getting first time blinkers on Saturday, but he'll also be getting first time Lasix. Mandaloon, who's raced eight times, has never had Lasix before either, and he's going to Lasix in this race as well. That makes me scratch my head a little bit, but Midnight Bourbon, first time blinkers, first time Lasix. Mandaloon, first time Lasix. Let's get this rivalry going again, Matt. Uh, maybe the tactical edge to Midnight Bourbon as far as the speed, maybe the edge because he raised eight weeks ago while Mandaloon's been off for six months, but I expect both to run a good race. I do too. Um, and it's exciting to see this rivalry continue. I'll admit I am a little disappointed that they are both going over to the Saudi Cup because I fear that uh, after that, we're not going to see them for, you know, a few months, but, uh, you know, we'll see what happens in this uh, Louisiana sticks. Yeah, well, $20 million has uh, uh, likely yeah. attracted them both to the Saudi Cup next after this Louisiana. So it's it's a prep, but these are two horses that uh, don't often throw in bad races. So we, we look for a good one. Let's talk about a couple others in the Louisiana. Uh, there are some interesting horses in here besides the top two. Again, just like the Leconte, I think we have two clear favorites. A warrant is also traded by Brad Cox, who trains Mandaloon. And Warrant did some nice uh, things. He wasn't raced a ton, kind of like Mandaloon, but the Senate Constitution just seemed to get a little bit better, a little bit better. He won both the Oklahoma Derby in his last start and the Texas Derby a few starts before that. And his last four starts, it was two wins and two seconds in four stakes races. Yeah, and there was a second in the West Virginia Derby in that sequence that you're talking about. Uh, uh, good performances uh, uh, in those mid-major derbies. Uh, uh, certainly, uh, you know, in that Brad Cox barn where you, you know, had to compete with three-year-olds like Mandaloon and Essential Quality. And uh, Warren also was given some time off. He has been off since, since September. Right, right. He, he's been freshened, uh, not as uh, long, uh, gone as long as Mandaloon, but he's had some time off. Hey, and the reason he wasn't in bigger races maybe last year was because of who else was in the barn. Uh, certainly, it's a big jump up from who he was racing, uh, horses like Mr. Wireless, to Mandaloon and Midnight Bourbon, but uh, a horse who certainly has the potential to step up and do bigger things this year at Force. So Warrant is returning as well in the Louisiana and then I also have to mention Chess, Chess Chief Matt, uh, also a son of Into Mischief, just like Mandaloon. This, this is the first older, older horse we're talking about because the first three horses were all four-year-olds coming back after good three-year-old years. Uh, Chess Chief is an experienced horse. He's six years old. He's run 30 times in his career, but it's just striking how much better he is at fairgrounds than any other track. Matt, I'm going to throw a stat at you that, that's almost hard to believe, but it's true. I, I assure you it's true. Fairgrounds, Chess Chief has run 10 times. He's won five. Every other track that he's run at, he is 0 for 20, Matt Schiffman. 
all five of his races at the fairgrounds. And that includes a very nice performance in the recent tenacious stakes at fairgrounds. You go back, right. And you go back at striking and some of the other big races he was in, he was eighth in the Clark, fifth in the jockey club gold cup. Um, so, uh, Hey, home field, uh, uh, track home field advantage for chess chief. For sure. Horses for courses. I've seen it. I've seen it all my uh, racing career following the horses. Some horses just love certain tracks and I'm convinced that Chess Chief loves fairgrounds. Uh, this is also a race where I think all the principals and a few other horses want to be kind of close. And, and certainly Mandaloon does not want Midnight Bourbon to get too far away. I think Warrant's going to show some speed in here. So Chess Chief rallying up, I, I think is a good, uh, a good plan on a track that he loves. And uh, I expect him to be in the trifecta, and who knows, as a long shot, he might even do better than third in this Louisiana chess chief, a horse for course, but who's your top pick, Matt? I'm going Mandaloon, Brian. Um, you know, I, I thought his record was uh, so impressive last year. Um, the time is probably going to do him really well. Uh, Brad, uh, Brad Cox will have him ready. Yeah, yeah, that, that's the bottom line for me. Midnight Bourbon would have been easy to pick considering he's more uh, recency with his starts and the fact that he has some control and speed. He's getting first time blinkers and Lasix, as I mentioned. I think he'll run another good race like he pretty much always does. But Mandaloon, I just really think uh, Cox has him ready to go too. Cox is a trainer that likes to have his horses ready off the layoff. He's looked great in workouts and I think if any of these horses become one of the best horses in the country this year, I think it, I think Mandaloon is, is, is the likely one. So I'd like to see him come back running. We're not giving you much odds here. I, I, I do like my Mandaloon best as well, like Matt. I do think, as I said, Chess Chief is a horse to throw in the exotics, though, uh, whether it be for third or second. I think Chess, Chess Chief is going to come running. And who knows, maybe Mandaloon and Midnight Bourbon hook up early and Chess Chief comes along and uh, picks up some pieces. We'll see. Folks, I want to remind you to subscribe to uh, our YouTube channel here at Horse Racing Nation. It sure does help Matt and Matt. And if you turn on those notifications, you'll be sure never to miss another episode of Horse Center. We do appreciate it. Matt, there's one more race I want to talk about on this really nice card at Fairgrounds on Saturday. It's got Kentucky Oaks implications. And uh, one of the biggest reasons it's, it's got Kentucky Oaks implications is because there's a filly named La Crete in here who I think is one of the buzz filly. Sure, Echo Zulu is far and away the champion from uh, uh, last year as a juvenile filly and turning three this year. But La Crete is maybe gotten more talk than everybody else. And, and part of it, of course, a big part of it is her pedigree. Yeah, that's for sure. Uh, uh, Lacrette from uh, the barn of Steve Asmussen uh, won her debut at Churchill Downs in November by a little bit more than two lengths, showing uh, uh, some nice controlling speed. Of course, you're talking about the fact that Lacrette is out of the great racehorse and great producing mare now, Cavording, who also produced Clarier, who, as we remember from last year's three-year-old Philly campaigns, also ran for uh, Steve Asmussen. Not the same sire. Uh, Lacrette is by uh, Medagliadoro, which, you know, means distance is going to be uh, uh, no problem for, uh, for this Philly. Uh, Clarier, as I remember, was by Curlin. Is that right, Brian? That's true, Matt. Clarier was one of the best three fillies in the country. Uh, uh, and Clarier and Lacrete are the same dam, Cavorting, as Matt said. Cavorting, of course, was a really, really nice grade one winner several years ago. And uh, now she's producing good looking horses. Clarier was excellent. I, I, there was one point in the Breeders' Cup distop where I thought she was going to get all the money. Uh, and she wasn't far off at the at the wire. Uh, Claire Ayer was a very nice uh, three-year-old filly for uh, Stone Street last year. And Lacrete could be a very nice three-year-old filly for Stone Street this year. The homebred, uh, listen, the Dagliadoro, uh, no one has had better fillies uh, over the last decade or more than Medagliadoro. He, he sired Rachel Alexandra. He sired Songbird. And now Lacrete looks like she could be something special with that cavorting on the other side, Matt, and her, her maiden 
win was um, visually impressive. I mean, she showed a turn of foot. Uh, she she just took complete control of that race, and then she was geared down late. So she truly could get any time, uh, could be any kind, and it'll be interesting to see what she looks like here a second time out as she goes up into stakes company. I think she'll be a heavy favorite, though, Matt, because she is the buzz filly. There are a couple other interesting fillies. It's not a super field by any means, but there's uh, a couple recent uh, horses who have run well at fairgrounds. I also want to mention Sweetest Pie. Uh, Sweetest Pie is an interesting filly for me as well. And she comes from the Todd Fletcher barn. Matt, she's a daughter of Tappet. Yeah, and she was a very impressive debut winner at Belmont Park uh, back in October. As you mentioned, uh, f- uh, out uh, uh, by by Tappet. Um, then she came back in the tempted um, and ran, I guess you might say a little bit of a disappointing fourth place. Yeah. And I think that tempted was a pretty good field. Yeah. Uh, sometimes the tempted isn't, sometimes it is. I think this will turn out to be a pretty good field. Certainly she'll need to improve here. Uh, well, a lot of that depends on how, just how good LaCrete is, but I think Sweetest Pie will improve. Uh, she had only that sprint win, which looked really good. And as a daughter of Tappet, I could see her getting better with races. She's working well in Florida for trainer Todd Pletcher. Uh, I, I think this says something that he's sending her out to New Orleans for this race. I think uh, I think that there's she's well intended. And she was fourth in that attempt. It kind of an evenly fourth, second race of her life. But uh, the horse who was third, Nest, of course, came back to win the graded uh, Demoiselle after that. So... Uh, a pretty decent performance. I think she'll improve, and I think she has the ability to kind of uh, sit near the pace and make a move. So I, I think she is the most likely upsetter of La Crete in the Silver Bullet Day. Another one I do want to mention, though, is Fanny and Freddie Matt. Uh, she's a daughter of Malibu Moon, who didn't look like a whole lot in the first two starts at Saratoga and Keeneland, but it's been a different filly since she got to New Orleans. Yep, Al, Al Stoll like, <clears throat> likes the fairgrounds, and very often his horses like the fairgrounds, as you mentioned. Um, she broke her maiden in her third try when she moved to fairgrounds, when she was going two turns in the mile and a 16th uh, distance, and then came back to finish second in the untappable stakes, just beaten a neck. So uh, uh, on the fairgrounds track, this is an interesting horse. Yeah, she made a she made a real nice uh, winning type of move last time in that stakes race, and uh, uh, came up short late. She was passed late in in that stakes race at Fairgrounds last month. So, uh, coupled that with a really nice maiden win, her first race at uh, Fairgrounds, and I, I think she's a horse who you kind of know what you're going to get here a third time now at Fairgrounds. Uh, if either La Crete or uh, Sweetest Pie coming from respectively Kentucky or uh, Kentucky or New York. Uh, don't uh, bring their best race as they try fairgrounds for the first time. And, and in La Crete's case, uh, face stakes company for the first time, Fanny and Freddie makes a lot of sense as a horse who could, uh, who could upset as well. But uh, I think all eyes are on La Crete, Matt. We, we, we don't know how good she's going to be. She looked so good the first time her breeding is off the charts. Um, I, I, I want to beat her because I, I think she'll get pounded at the windows. But uh, it's, uh, on the other hand, it's hard to pick against her. Who do you like in the Silver Bullet Day? Yeah, Brian, so much potential with that pedigree and the initial performance. I'm going to go with La Crete in there. Um, I know uh, I'm a little chalky today, but sometimes that's the way it plays out. Yeah, sometimes that's the way it plays out, and that's okay, Matt, as long as you're picking winners, and you very well may be today. Uh, Matt uh, gets a little French accent there with, uh, I'm, I'm going to call her Lacrete until, until I hear otherwise. Um, she's the one to beat. She's the one all eyes are on, but I'm going to try to beat her. I'm going to try to beat her because I think she'll be too low for just one race <laughs> in her life. I'm going to try to beat her with Sweetest Pie. I think Pletcher has this filly on the improve. Uh, I like that she has a little bit more foundation. She's working well in Florida. I think Sweetest Pie might be able to get the job done here in the silver bullet day some other good stakes on this card don't miss out on uh, uh fairgrounds on saturday it's a it's a beautiful 14 race card we covered the kentucky derby and the kentucky oaks implication prep races we also talked about that very interesting rivalry going on that starts out this year in the louisiana between mandaloon and midnight bourbon two of the top three olds in the country last year from an excellent crop matt let me get a party shot from you my friend 
yeah, hey, Horse Center fans, load up your uh, your ADW accounts because you got 14 races uh, at the fairgrounds on Saturday. Uh, Brian and I gave you picks on three of the big ones, so enjoy that. We'll be back next week to talk about the Pegasus World Cup. And, of course, I want to thank our producer, Ben Wilkie, for putting together the show. Yeah, thanks to Ben. Thanks to Candace Curtis for the race graphics. Thanks to Derby Wars, the best contest site out there. They're our sponsor. We appreciate that. As Matt said, it's a really nice card here at Fairgrounds on Saturday. It's an even better card next week at Gulfstream Park when the Pegasus World Cup, $3 million Pegasus World Cup, featuring a showdown between Nick's Go and Life is Good happens. So we'll be, of course, focusing on that race and that showdown. They'll also have a lot of good races. Uh, Pegasus World Cup turf. They got a new Philly Mare uh, Pegasus turf as well, Matt. So we have a lot to talk about. Don't miss it next week right here on Horse Center. Until then, have a great week. We will see you then. Mm-hmm.